Hey guys, it's Libby. So today I'm here to talk about OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder. You probably have somewhat an idea what this is, but you might not know everything there is to know about it. And while this video won't tell you everything, I hope that it'll definitely inform you about some things, clear up some things, and whatnot. So OCD isn't something that I really struggle with myself. So when I went to pulling information for this video together, of course I went on the internet, but I also went to you guys. So if any of you guys helped me out with this video, giving me information, stuff like that, your experiences, whatever, I want to just say thank you because I couldn't make this video without y'all, so again, thank you. I also want to mention that this video is sponsored by No CD. No CD provides online therapy for people with OCD. You can do live video sessions with one of their licensed OCD therapists and receive 24-7 support between sessions on the No CD app. To get started, download the free NoCD app or visit www.nocd.com to learn more. I just want to start off talking about some OCD misconceptions, so let's get started. So the first thing I want everybody to know is that OCD can look many different ways. Just like pretty much any mental disorder, OCD can present itself in many different ways. It's not always about organizing and cleanliness. It's not always about germs and hand washing. It's not always about counting and repetition. It can be about all sorts of different things. So while it certainly can be those things that I just listed, I want you to keep in mind that that's not always what it is. So it can be a lot of different things. Um, the next misconception is that the person with OCD is being picky. They're not being picky, okay? This OCD brings along feelings of like anxiety, depression, stress, among other things that why would somebody sign up for that and be like, yeah, I'm just going to be picky. It's going to come with all these terrible side effects, but I'm just going to be picky about stuff. So say the person's OCD does look like a lot of hand washing, a lot of fear of germs, whatever. That person isn't like happily washing their hands every five minutes like, oh yes, just want to stay clean, <laughs> all good. Like they're like, there's like mental shit that goes along with it that isn't fun. So that person, like it's not... It's not like a choice that this person is being this way, that they're dealing with these things. Okay. Oh, there was a fly. I missed it. Okay. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's not a choice. It's not just being picky. Another misconception is that you can notice it right away. So while well, sometimes this is true, sometimes you can notice it, that's not always true. So just like how I said it can present itself in a bunch of different ways, the visibility level of it can present in a bunch of different ways as well. And say a person is dealing with multiple things in their OCD, like say it's like hand washing and it's like organization or whatever, like say they've got two things or more. Maybe you can see one of them, but you can't see the other one, okay? So it's not always visible. You're not always going to know when it's happening because there are small things that happen that you might not notice and those things still matter. Those things are still a, probably a tough experience for the person who's dealing with it. Some people think this happens only to females. Is that the case? No. Some people think it only happens to white people. Is that the case? No. I could go on, but OCD can affect anybody, okay? It's not the same thing as being neat. It's not the same thing as being a germaphobe in the way that you like pull your hand sanitizer after you like touch like, I don't know, something dirty. I don't know. It's not that, okay? Like OCD is a real mental illness that has a whole list of symptoms and not just anybody who's neat and organized has it, okay? Going along with that, casual usage of OCD, that term, is sort of offensive. Like saying like, 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 like the example I gave, oh my gosh, my pencil is in the wrong place, I'm so OCD. Like, that's kind of offensive, that's kind of like downplaying the experience of the people who actually have OCD, it's making it seem like it's something silly, something no big deal, you know? So, if you don't have OCD, don't be like, OMG, I'm so OCD, like, don't do that, okay? It's just not cool. Like, say you're brushing your hair and you looked at your hairbrush and there's a bunch of hair in it. Would you say, oh my gosh, guys, look at my hairbrush. It has so much hair. Oh my gosh, I have cancer. Would you say that? Would, would you say that? Mm, probably not. And if you would, reconsider yourself. Um, so, 
yeah um just don't use it casually it's not a little joke it's not something like that you know so don't use it casually um and along with that i just want to say it's not quirky to have ocd that um a lot of people think that mental illnesses are quirky and fun and makes them different um that's not what mental illness is all about i can tell you that much it is not just a quirky thing okay it is a real struggle so it's not just fun it's not something you say you have when you don't have it so forth so now that I talked about what OCD is not, I want to say a few things that it is. So I just want to reiterate what I said earlier that everybody is different with their OCD. It's not presenting itself in just one way. Also, like I mentioned earlier, it is on a spectrum. Um, another thing I want to mention is that it is complicated. It's not just as simple as washing your hands. It is not just as simple as putting the pencil in the right spot, you know? So just keep in mind that it's not... A simple thing and then the next thing I want to say is that it can change so OCD might look one way one day but then five weeks later it looks a little bit different for that person you know so OCD can change other people think that it's not that bad like it's easy to treat like oh okay just stop washing your hands sorry I keep going back to that example it's just a really simple one to go to um, but like it's not that simple. If it was that simple, people would do it. I feel like I say that in all my mental health misconception videos. Like, if it was that easy, people would do it. So, just keep in mind that that it's not that simple, you know? So, yeah. And along with that, I just want you to know those people who are dealing with OCD can't stop their thoughts. They can't. If they could, they would. And then when it comes to their compulsions, they're kind of forced into it. Like I said, they can't just stop washing their hands. It's not like a choice that they're making. They don't want to wash their hands 5,000 times a day, you know? So it's not a choice that they have. It's not like a simple fix. Like, oh, just stop. You know, it's not that easy. I wish it was, but it's not. So when I was looking at what OCD is online, I saw that there are several types of OCD and different sources said, oh, there's four, there's four types. And then another one would be like, no, there's five types. So I don't know, probably the DSM has the magical real answer of how many types of OCD there are, but the internet is a little bit all over the place. So I wrote down some of the types that I came across and we're going to go through them now. I'm doing this to give you guys sort of an example of what the different types can look like. So the first type is checking. So an example of that would be turning the stove or lights or water like off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on until they feel satisfied that it's off or that it's on. The next type of OCD that came up for me was contamination. So you might be wary of bathrooms, of crowds, of sex, of hand shaking. So that's kind of where the hand washing comes in or hand sanitizing comes in. Um, goes with that. The next type is symmetry or ordering. So examples of that are organization, cleanliness. I had a follower tell me that they hang certain types of clothes on certain types of hangers or certain color hangers or something like that. Like all the sweaters need to be on a blue wire hanger. All of the t-shirts need to be on a white plastic hanger, you know, like that kind of thing. And the next type that I came across was rumination and intrusive thoughts. So usually when you're ruminating, you're ruminating about death, religion, philosophy, things like that. Pretty like deep topics. You're not just ruminating about what you want to have for lunch that day. Like you're ruminating about like serious things. Um, and then when it comes to intrusive thoughts, you might be having violent thoughts. You might be having intrusive sexual thoughts. You might be having body focused thoughts. So again, you're not just having an intrusive thought like, I like pie, like it's not like that just came in your head and that's like, oh, that's my intrusive thought. Like it's something like serious, you know, like it's something that's like, whoa, you know, yeah. The next type of OCD I'm going to talk about is hoarding. So if you don't know what hoarding is, it's when you can't get rid of things. Sometimes it's trash. Like you can't get rid of literal trash. So yeah, if you've seen the show Hoarders Buried Alive, that is what hoarding is. Um, so like I said, OCD can present itself in so many different ways. Those are just a few examples, you know, like it can go out so much further. So much, so much, so much. Like there are so many types of compulsions that can happen with OCD. So just keep that in mind. 
And so you may be wondering, well, why don't these people just not do the compulsions? Like, wouldn't that fix everything? So a person with OCD feels like something bad will happen if they don't follow through with their rituals. So when it comes to locking and unlocking a door, say, they think that if they don't lock and unlock it seven times, that somebody's going to be able to break in and kill them. So it can be something very extreme like that, like locking a door to murder, you know? Um, so it can be very extreme. A follower gave me the hypothetical example like that their dog will run away if they don't wear yellow that day. Does that make any sense logically? No. But like that's what their mind is telling them, that's what the compulsion is telling them. They're compulsed to wear yellow or else their dog will run away, you know? And I also just want to mention that all these compulsions and things can lead to other mental illnesses. It can cause anxiety. It can cause depression. Now, if you're dealing with OCD, I hope you've enjoyed this video, but this is where things get a lot better for you. You might be wondering, well, damn, that sounds like me. How do I fix it? Like I said, you can't just stop. Like if it was that easy, we'd all do it, right? But um, there are options for you and therapy is probably the number one option for treating OCD. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by NoCD. When you sign up with them online, you will be paired with a therapist who specializes in OCD. And you know, the value of having a therapist who specializes in what you're dealing with is so insane. Like it is so valuable. You can't always find a therapist who knows what they're talking about when it comes to what you're dealing with. So having this whole platform dedicated to people who are dealing with OCD is just amazing. Another thing I'll mention is that they told me it is usually covered by insurance. You might have thought like, oh, well, it's online. My insurance isn't going to cover it. Well, it might. So, oh, the fucking flies. Uh, anyways, um, um, what was I even saying? Oh, yeah, so it might be covered by your insurance. So give it a shot Try to find out it might be covered and that would be insane and super awesome, right? One of my favorite parts of this platform is that in between sessions if you're struggling there are tools for you on the NOCD platform So there are self-help tools which can be obviously very helpful and then there's also an online community of other people facing OCD. So if you just need somebody to talk to in between who understands what the hell you're going through, it's there. It's there. And that's insane. Like there, like that would be so beneficial for so many people dealing with all kinds of mental illnesses. And there's this platform out there for people with OCD. And that's so important. It's so special and awesome. And I think it's great. So if you're interested in this platform, I highly recommend checking it out if you've got OCD and you're looking for treatment. I think that this is a wonderful, it sounds wonderful, so just give it a shot, you know. Hopefully it's covered by your insurance and stuff and you'll just be good to go and you'll hopefully find some relief in your life. But if you have anything else you want to add about obsessive compulsive disorder, feel free to leave comments down below. People go through, read them, inform yourselves, and all that good stuff. So I hope this video was informative and helpful. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day, life, whatever. Bye.